Vectors Part 1a Introduction In this part of the chapter, we'll be learning on the vector representation and notation, magnitude of a vector, equal vectors, negative vectors, and zero vector. Vector representation and notation A vector is a quantity having both magnitude or size, which means the length of a vector, and direction. Some examples of vectors are forces, velocity. Uh, velocity is the one with about speed, but speed has no direction, but velocity has a direction. Acceleration also have a particular direction. Now, a vector in general is represented by a line segment with an arrow. Do you know why does it have an arrow? Yes, because it tells you about the direction. The length of the line actually is the magnitude of the vector, how far, how big, or how long, or how short it is. And it's often denoted by uh, the starting point to the ending point. So in this case, in this diagram, we know very clearly that this vector starts from A and ends at B. So it's called the vector A to B with half of an arrow on top. Or, alternatively, sometimes when we write it in our plain uh, form on paper, we will write it as vector A with a letter, small a, and with the curl at the bottom. So it needs to have roller skates in order to move, right? So this one is like it's roller skate. But in exam paper question on printed paper format, they will just put the vector A in a different form and with bold. So this means vector A, but we do not write it like that in our exam. So we will write this version in our examinations. Now, a vector can be written as a column vector, X and Y. Make a guess, why is it X and Y? Now, a vector in general can be represented by a horizontal direction, which is the x-axis direction, and a vertical direction, which is the y-axis direction. So now, if I were to have a column vector, it means the, vector, the number here on x means the direction to the on the x-axis direction is going towards the right hand side. If it's positive, it's going to the right. Or if it's negative, it means it's moving to the left hand side. Now for the y value, what is our y-axis? A y-axis goes up. So for a positive uh, number here, it will give you a direction that is moving upwards. If I have a negative number, it means I'm moving in the downwards direction. So for example, a vector 2, negative 3 will mean 2 units in the x-axis direction and negative 3 units, which means going down, in the y direction. So for example, over here in my magnitude, uh, if I were to have a, B, starting from A to move towards B, I can actually have A to move a couple of units. So moving in the x-axis number of units direction, followed by going in the upwards direction, the y number of units, and they will form a right angle triangle. So how do you think I can actually find the magnitude of AB. If, for example, let's say X is um, 4 units and Y is, let's say, 3 units, how will I be able to find the length of AB? Well, I can apply the Pythagoras theorem. And in this case, the length of AB will have a magnitude of 5 units. That brings us to the next part of the topic, a magnitude of the vectors. Magnitude of the vector is actually given by the length of the line segment. Now, how do we indicate magnitude? Magnitude is of a vector can be represented by 
a to b, the vector a, starting at a, ending at b, I find the absolute length, which means the magnitude. So I'm not going to have a negative length. I'll just only take the absolute positive value. Or I can have vector uh, return from a on roller skates and with the two lines, the absolute value, so it's magnitude. Or in printed form, uh, what they can do, they will bow it and print it this way and with a magnitude. Okay, so for example, we have this. How do we find the magnitude of the length of this line segment? Let's say for example, A to B is given in the column vector um, 12 and 5. For example, what does that mean? It means A will travel from A, I'll travel in 12 units on the positive x-axis direction. And then I'll go up by 5 units in the positive y-axis direction to reach my final destination, B. So we will form a right angle triangle. How do we find the magnitude of such a vector? We use the Pythagoras theorem. So for example, in this case, AB will have a magnitude of square root of x square plus y square, 12 square plus 5 square, which gives me 13. No cm or whichever, but it's just units. Let's try other properties. Equal vectors or equivalent vectors. Now, where can we see such kind of equal vectors? What are they used for? Before we begin to look at some of the questions, we have to know that for equal vectors, they must have some two conditions. Number one, they must have the same magnitude. That means the same length itself. And they must have the same direction. So the arrow must point in the same way. And if they have the same direction, usually they are parallel. But parallel vectors can have different lengths. But for equal vectors, they must have the same length. So here are the two conditions. Number one, same magnitude. Number two, same direction. For example here, if AB is equal to CD, then the length of AB, which is the magnitude of AB, must be the same as the magnitude of CD. And not only that, I know that the line AB must be parallel. That means they will have the same kind of gradient parallel to each other. AB will be parallel to CD. So where do we see often see uh, equal vectors? Equal vectors are very common in this particular shape over here. It's a parallelogram. Okay, so for example, if I were to give you that AB is equal to CD and AB is 2, the column vector 2, 3, then CD will be the column vector 2, 3. Uh, wanting to take note down here, usually students sometimes they like to write 2 over 3. Now, this is not a fraction. Okay, please do not do so when you are writing column vectors. This is supposed to be just 2 at the x value and 3 at the y value. So CD will be the same, exactly equals to AB. Now given in example 2, you have a parallelogram. Now parallelogram gives you not only parallel lines, they also have the same length. So in this case, we know that AB will have a equal length and same direction as DC. So in this case, A to B, will, this vector will be equal to D to C. Can I write AB to be equal to CD? Well, in this case, the answer is no. Why is that so? Because 
CD is in a different direction from AB. We have A to point B. So we must also start with D to C. They must move in the same direction. Now, can you name the other pair of equal vectors? For example, if I were to have D to A, then this vector will be equals to C to B. Have you gotten the answer? Let's try one of the questions in order for us to use the concept on uh, equal vectors. In this following diagram, A, B, C, D, E, F is a regular hexagon. What is so special about a regular hexagon? Now, hexagon have six sides and regular hexagon have six equal sides. That means I have six equal length where ED will be equals to AB and the rest. So all these diagonals inside this uh, hexagon intersect at the point O, meaning O is the center of this regular hexagon. Find the vectors which are equals to AB. So if I have the vector A to B in this particular direction, where are the other vectors that will appear? that to be equal. So I've done the first one. Actually, E to D is the first vector. So I can be equals to E, D. Can you spot the other vectors? Well, the answers are, I can have um, F to O and O to C. So in this case, our answer will be F to O and O to C. Can I change the direction and write, for example, O, F instead? No. Why is that so? Because they will not be in the same direction. So for an equal vector, it must have the same length and the same direction. Next one. Identify the equal vectors for the vector O A. O to A is going in the downwards direction. O to A. Where are the other vectors that has the same as O to A? We have quite a couple of answers. Can you spot them? O to A to be the same as C to B. D to O and E to F. Are there any more answers? So let me write them down. So O A is the same as equals to C to B, D to O and E to F. Can I write them in a different manner, different direction? No. So they must correspond to the same direction. So this is equal vectors. Now what happens if I have a length that are exactly the same length, they are also parallel to each other, but they go in a different direction. What will those vectors be? Let us look at the next part of this chapter. Negative vectors. Now, two vectors are negative vectors of each other if, two conditions, they have the same magnitude, meaning the same length, but they are in the opposite direction of each other, but they are still parallel, but just that they are going in the opposite direction, the reverse. So, that case, A to B, this vector over here will be the negative and opposite of B to A. So what do we have? AB will be equals to the negative of BA. 
and vice versa, BA will be the negative of AB. So if AB is a vector A on roller skates, then B to A is negative A. Remember, we have vectors in the column vector form. So if A to B is given to be 2 units on the x-axis and negative 3 units on the y-axis, then what will B A be? It will come in the opposite direction. That means from 2, it will change to negative 2. And from negative 3, it will change to positive 3. So this is B A. Now there is one particular vector that everyone loves. So this is called a zero vector or a null vector. A vector with no magnitude and no direction. Now some students will say, huh, why would we need to learn to use this? Because this is quite useless. But now in terms of uh, vectors, this is not true. For example, I can have a starting point A, let's say uh, from Amo Kyo. I travel to the point B, A, uh, Badok, and then I go to Changi Airport, okay, and then maybe I go back to uh, Daimaru, the shopping center, or somewhere else, or whichever. So in this case, if I were to travel from A to B, I will have the vector AB. B to C and then C to D and if eventually I will to go and come back to A I'm actually starting at A and ending at the point A itself although the resultant that means the final the resultant vector is a zero vector a let represented by O with a, a roller skates. Okay, but that doesn't mean that I did not travel at all. I can have other vectors in this relationship. So this can help me to solve some of the word problems that are going to come up in a later while. Alright, so please bear in mind what is the zero vector. Up next, we'll do the next few part of the vectors, uh, including some of the calculations over here. Now, take a quick break before we come back to part 2.